hand versus chainsaw. It looks painful. Our hospitals are taking care of more patients than ever. You're right. <laughs> With medical teams under constant pressure. Can Dr. Pixie come to Resus, please? Somebody as poorly as this little one, we really need to treat them quickly. To meet our expectations. I'm just worried about what it's going to be like afterwards. But there's a crucial member of the team we sometimes forget. I've never ever been on a bed like this. The hospital bed. Another ward, another storage, another bed. <laughs> In our lifetime, we are likely to need one of them at least three times. I've probably spent a quarter of my life on a hospital bed. <laughs> In this series, our cameras have been given unprecedented access to beds in four very different hospitals across the country. It's life, life and death, and everything that goes in between. We'll see the world through the bed's eyes. Hello, my love. Hiya. As they share the most challenging. I don't know what to do. I don't know. Most intimate. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, no. And most rewarding. Happy birthday. In hospital world. Moments of our lives. Thank you for being here. Have you been anywhere else? And a hospital cannot function without beds. Beds are vital. This is the secret life of the hospital bed. Last year, there were more than 22 million visits to hospital emergency departments in the UK. Having high grade fever and a heart rate of between 120 to 140. The Royal Victoria Infirmary in Newcastle has more A&E beds than monitoring bays or examination rooms. Hi Rosie, it's just Gemma. Do we have another key before around there? These beds are never empty for long. At busy times, the emergency beds have nowhere to go but the corridors. With all bays full of patients, a &E Bed 9 is standing by. It's just before 4pm, and today, 27-year-old Sister Hill is in charge of the department's workflow. In the last hour, I've had about 20 patients book into the emergency department, so we've had a, an increased volume, so we can call that a surge. We don't get any more staff. It's the same staff we've had all day. I've got no beds on the assessment suite at the moment, which is our admissions unit. The A&E department is already dealing with a major motorway pileup. All bays and rooms are occupied by patients. <laughs> and then another road traffic accident. Hey, you right? Steve. OK. Cheers. Someone's been driving down the A1 and a ladder's fallen off the back of a lorry and hit a car and bounced off. Hiya, sorry, I'm supposed to have a good one with A car has been hit by a ladder. It flew off the roof of a van whilst 38-year-old Joanne was travelling at speed. Onto the red trolley here, please. Joanne is transferred to A&E bed nine. You keep your arms nice and still. Okay. okay. One lift. Ready, on, steady, lift. Paramedics who were first on the scene assess the mum of two. Remember what I said about your breathing? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's really important. She may have damaged her neck and spine. As a precaution, she's been put in a neck brace. We're in the right place, OK? Be well looked up, huh? Oh. Joanne is in shock. Right, we'll get you booked Thank in. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much indeed. I'll go and ring auto glass for you. Emergency care assistant Buxton, who was first to attend, is a friend. I heard the voice first and then realised it was Gemma. <laughs> when we seen the job came up on the screen and I didn't realise it was her until I seen her dad and then I looked at the screen and noticed it was Joanne's name. It's nice to know that somebody's there, you know, when you when you have an accident like that. All right. Joanne's 66-year-old father, Brian, was a passenger in the car. All of a sudden, 
the ladders just flew off the van and just smashed straight into the windscreen in front of us. So obviously I slammed the brakes on. Um, we we're just lucky that we we're just lucky to be here. Put it this way, we we're surprised nobody went into the back of the car and caused any more accidents. Dad Brian was taken straight to see a consultant on arrival. Paramedic Common has news on Joanne's father. He's all right, don't he's worry about right. it. Yeah, he's fine. He's a big, strong man, isn't he? He is, he is. He's been very lucky, like yourself. Has he's he been been examined in the back of the ambulance, right. but would like an x-ray. Right, no problem. But he's happy for him to walk around. Right, that's all right. And as long so as don't right. worry about him. Can't you just get, like, shocked, don't you? Definitely. Natural reaction mm -hmm. after what's happened. Are you still in pain? Oh, aye. How bad out of 10? I would say it's gone up to 7 now. It was something before. Was it? I thought it was something. An 8. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been a lot worse, but it hasn't. Oh, I've got glass on my face. Tiny, tiny shards, aren't Joanne's dad, Brian, has also been given a neck brace ahead of an x ray. All right. The accident happened less than an hour ago. Brian is also still in shock. Yeah, you're just driving along and bang. Uh, what, what here, that's the main thing. Looking for it to be here. Yes. One guy, I must say, he worked for the electric van. We need to find out who we he is. We need to find out who he is. There was a gentleman that stopped in an electricity van behind and got Joanne and her dad out and sat them in their van. And unfortunately, I didn't get his name for to thank him very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for what uh, you did. Uh, he, well, he just, he, he stopped and he, he helped and he put Joanne in the van and, and just looked after her till everybody came. He was really, really good. Uh, Joanne is shown pictures of her car. I can't believe that. I've been at the picture. Right. I can't believe that I haven't been decapitated. Oh, you're yeah, right. That, that was it. It was the ladders underneath the car right. that had come off. A and E Bed Nine will stay with Joanne and her father as they wait for a further examination. Nice deep breath. You're going to blow baby out. Okay. Across the UK, around 80 new babies are born every hour. One of the country's largest maternity units is at Queen's Hospital, Romford. The 25 maternity beds here are in high demand. Once a baby is born, they need to be freed up ready for the next expectant mum. Maternity services are a bit like A&E departments for maternity. You prioritise your triage, we escalate, we have a traffic light system here at Queen's and basically for any woman that comes in you'll be deemed as low, medium or high risk. Maternity bed seven is moved for its next mum to be. We're cleaning your room at the moment. Yeah. As soon as it's nice and clean and done, we're going to transfer you. Okay. So Yona and Livyu are originally from Romania and are having their first baby. Yona's contractions have started. The contraction, too much. Yona was scheduled to have an elective caesarean section tomorrow because her baby is in the breech position. Tomorrow, 8 a.m., she have appointment for the caesarean. You know, but... The water is... she's broken. She's now the caesarean, not tomorrow, you know? The baby went out. The baby, the head is It's not reversed, it's head is, is up. I tried a week ago to reverse the baby, but the baby likes staying up, you know? Okay, the room is ready. Working alongside maternity bed seven is midwife Madzikanda. Bridge, it is a complicated delivery. The baby is coming bum first instead of head first. So the head is right 
at the top of her abdomen, and then the bum is presenting down instead of coming head first. And it will be difficult for the legs to be delivered, so that one they normally opt for a section. The surgical team and theatres are currently tied up with other emergencies. Until they become free, all Yona can do is wait with maternity bed seven. <laughs> Newcastle RVI's emergency department is full. Seriously injured patients are being treated following a motorway accident. So there's a cubicle ready now for her. Right. There's also an additional cubicle if we need it. a &E bed nine has been with mum of two, Joanne, for 45 minutes. She was brought in by ambulance with her dad, Brian. They were involved in an accident on the A1. Three-storey ladder straight through the windscreen. Look, you didn't take a head off. And they didn't hit the ground, did they not? No, no they didn't hit the so ground. They came straight up. And I just remember shouting to Joanne, the ladders, and then bang, the windscreen was out. Joanne's in shock and has pain in her back. She's been given pain relief. Dad Brian is taken to X ray. Obviously, I went forward and it hit my head off the windscreen and whatnot, you know, but luckily I had my arms up when, it, when the windscreen came in. I'm more worried about my daughter than what I am about myself. As long as she's all right, that's the main thing. That's all I want. I suppose it's a, it's a dad thing. Joanne and her children live around the corner from her mum and dad. a and &E Bed 9 is taking her to a monitoring bay. The backboard is taken away. And I think I've got blood on my new top. <laughs> I'm pleased I'm off the board now. I knew it was precautionary for to put us on. I've definitely done something at the bottom of my back. Um, the doctor hasn't examined yet because they're going to give us some more painkillers. I don't know if it's a new injury or if it's pre-existing and it's just exasperated or not, I don't know. A further examination shows that Joanne's existing back complaint has been aggravated. She's referred for physio and given pain relief. The results of Dad Brian's x-rays are being assessed by consultant Dr Carroll. I can't see anything that resembles a break, but he does have long-standing degenerative problems affecting his neck, so that is likely to be aggravated by whatever injury he's had today. So I'll go and have a chat with him. But there's certainly no new injury that we need to do anything active with. Yes. Mr. Short, is that right? I, uh, I'm Brian, I'm one of the other doctors. Uh -huh. Nigel told me about what he found. What you will experience is when you've been in bed overnight, it's all going to seize up. So when you wake up tomorrow morning, it's going to feel as bad as it gets. When you're getting regular painkillers, that should loosen up quite a bit. But then the following morning, you're going to be backwards again and you're going to be stiff again. So it's important you keep some painkillers by your bed. So I'll take that off for you then. Take this off, please. Thank you. Okay. Just that Fine. Off. Even now, you're probably going to be fairly seized up. Yeah. Haven't been sat in the collar for a little while. Okay. Joanne's pain relief is taking effect. Dad Brian joins her alongside bed nine, back in the corridor. Ow. Ow. Oh, it's stuck in my head. Got the glass. Ow. Yeah. Ow. Ow. Just stuck on it. Oh, you got it. Ow. Oh. Hi, there's a chunk of glass. Whoa, Jesus. Oh. Piece of glass stuck in the head. There's some more as well. Well, I was saying I was going to hopefully going to be home in time for a cup of tea and watch Coraz, but I don't think that's good. Maybe I don't think. I was going to say, I think that might be Coronation Street tomorrow night yeah. instead of tonight. But at least we're smiling. Takes more than this for the knock Geordie's back. <laughs> as soon as Joanne's cuts have been cleaned, they can both leave A and E and bed nine. Okay. 
the emergency department at Newcastle's RVI is busy 24-7. Each bed sees up to 10 patients daily. There's also some bruises there where it looks as if you, you might have been grappled a bit. Uh -huh. Running the emergency department is a bit like running a kitchen. Everything is time dependent. Everything has to be run through a head chef. If it doesn't work like that, the emergency department falls apart. Nine can, eight can't. She's not ready to go yet. She hasn't yeah. had any antibiotics. He's too sick. Yeah. yeah. Okie dokie. A&E bed nine is ready for the next one. Right. Get you to hop onto this wizardry looking bed. 19 year old Ashley has come into hospital. Is that too high for you? He's no. passing large amounts of blood. It's a bit high. Right. Come and have a seat up here. He's also been vomiting and is in lots of pain. So how can we help you today, then? Ashley's being seen by registrar Dr Long. As soon as I got off the bus, I just I felt like I had an accident from the back. Right. Um, so okay. I went to the toilet and it was just all blood. Right. Like lots and lots of blood. What colour was the blood? Some was like really light red. Yeah. And then other times it was like dark. Okay. From then, I've just been non-stop vomiting with the pain and everything else. So the pain's kicked up a bit, is it? Yeah. Ashley recently had his appendix out. After the surgery, there were serious complications. Problem with this when I got discharged, yeah. like with the blood, yeah. and um, it was an infection thing in my stomach after I got it out. And I was in, in the stomach back. or in the appendix? In, in the appendix area. Right. And you had clutch. bleeding with that as well, yeah. did you? Discharged. So you've had quite a complicated appendix. Yeah, I right. have. And before that, you normally fit in well? Well, months before I got my appendix out, I got yeah. an emergency tonsillectomy. You saw you a lot of emergency and... surgery, aren't you? Yeah. You, get no, you get no points for coming back, you know. 10% of adults in the UK will experience rectal bleeding. When serious, it's treated as a medical emergency. Since his appendix operation, Ashley has been taking medication to help with his pain. No, it's just um, I'm on uh, regular medication at the minute. I'm on morphine, tramadol, yeah. and paras regular paracetamol. And you took all that and you're still in pain at the moment, are you? Yeah. And can I have a feel of your stomach? Yeah. Where is it most sore if you had to point to one spot? Oh, yeah. Just down yeah. there. Have we given you anything for pain relief yet? Pop your hands on no, she tried it. to put a cannula in my arm, but mm. she couldn't. <gasps> That's all. She couldn't get my veins. Dr Long must me. establish whether Ashley's symptoms are a result of his previous surgery or something new. That fits her. Just going to press a wee bit harder then, all right? Big breath in for me. And all the way out. She needs to do an internal examination. OK. Have you had one of these done before? Yeah. I'm going to pop a wee finger up back. If it's really uncomfortable, let me know, all right? Right. right. There's no blood there at the moment that I can see. It could just be a one-off. Right. You need to do some blood tests, OK? So we'll get you going on some fluids. Take your watch off, Mila. They normally have to get it through the side of my wrist before. Oh, that's a cheery thought, isn't it? Ashley needs fluids. Vomiting has left him dehydrated. Blood tests will detect any infection. I've got a few tiny ones for us to play with. OK? Just a lot of pain. Is probably blocked off. Why do we normally find anything on you? Is it your other arm? Um, normally they get them in there. Like, oh, you can't get them in there, can we? That, like, that one's normally the best. Is that the best one? We go around this side. Ashley's had trouble providing a blood sample before. How many attempts last time? About <sighs> eight. Oh, no! I had, like, little holes all over my ass because <laughs> they tried, like, the same one a couple of times and it was, like, ow. Ashley will stay with A&E bed nine until the blood sample is taken. It will reveal if there's any serious infection. At Queen's Hospital in Romford, the labour ward is busy. Staff are dealing with several emergencies. 
There we go. Hey, Maternity bed seven is with Yona. She was scheduled to have a caesarean section because her baby is lying in a breech position. But she's already started contractions. Gas and air is helping to ease the pain. You're waiting. It's my baby, you know. It's, I want to start the family, you know. Yona and Liviu married a year ago. They moved to the UK to make a better life for themselves. The baby's very happy for us. See, look at you eating. <laughs> Yona has been waiting with maternity bed seven for over two hours. Her contractions are getting stronger. Oh. Yeah, but she want to. She want to push. The sensation to push is a sign that the birth is imminent. Tell me what you feel like doing. The sensation for the push. Feel like pushing. Yeah. Oh no! Give me a minute. Let me just get you back. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Good. Good. Obstetrician Dr. Robinson arrives to establish how far Yona's labour has progressed. You, you have progressed in labour. You are about eight centimetres dilated, so that's why your, the pains have got stronger and you're feeling the urges to push. Um, I'm going to go and speak to the consultant and see what the safest way is to deliver your baby. But because you have progressed so quickly, it may not be safe to do a caesarean. We may end up delivering you vaginally in theatre. A caesarean section is no longer an option for Yona. Maternity bed seven takes her to theatre. Yeah. Can you have the clothes? You need to stay here. So oh, you get to the a team of midwives is on standby. Oh, they will assist in what is going to be a high risk breech birth. In the heart of Newcastle sits the Great North Children's Hospital. It has its own A&E department, with nine special paediatric beds. Obviously, if the patients need to come, the patients need to come. I haven't got any medical beds, do you know what I mean? So just whether it's bed or cubicle, if I'm going to put them on, you know, like Ward 10 or 11 kind of thing. The beds are the smallest in the hospital designed to look after patients under 16 who need emergency treatment. Are you breathing? Are you breathing in. Hand out. Paediatric Bed 27's next patient is 11-year-old John. His mum, Tina, brought him in after he fell off his bike. Swing your legs round. OK, I'm Laura. I'm one of he may have broken his arm. Um, we'll just stay there for a moment, all okay. right? Oh, is it John? Yes. 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 Nurse practitioner Rain gets the details of the accident. Is this your mum that you brought with you today? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Give my hands a little wash and we'll find out what's been happening with you. What's happened tonight? I came off my bike, oh. going downstairs. And how many were you attempting to go down? About 20. About 20. And when did you come off? At like the last one. At the last one. So you've gone down 19 and then you fell off at the last one. And he one. had his cousin on the back. Right. And how old is your cousin? <laughs> Nine. Nine. And then when you fell off, did you go over to the Nurse side? practitioner Rain checks to see if it's broken. Can you make your elbows go nice and straight? OK, yes. and then can you bend them up? And then bend them back out? And then can you flip them over? And then back again? Brilliant. Let me just have a little peep of this on. Any pain down in there? No. Any pain as we come up? Any there? Not there. Okay. What about there? A little tingly. A little tingly. Okay. And what about up there? No. Okay. And up in there. Can you lift your foot up and touch? 
brilliant. And then back down to the bed, squash my hand in. So if you curl your toes up, lovely. With no broken bones, nurse practitioner Rain examines the deep lacerations on John's elbow. I think your worst cut is up here, isn't yeah. it? So if you just pop it out for me. Deep as well. It is, isn't it? We break off of one of them. Yeah. You're a tough cookie. So what I want to do, I want to give these a really good clean, especially that one, and then hopefully we can put a steri strip along there just to bring the edges back together. Is that all right? Yeah. I'm relieved that there's nothing broken. It's just a good clean up. And we can get home and have some tea. <laughs> this is not the first time John's mum Tina has brought him to A and E. He's always sent to miss too when he's outside playing on his bikes, falling off scooters, going to the skate park, banging his head. He's always got bruises up and down his body. He's a typical little boy. I usually get hurt climbing trees and going to the skate park and all that. Well, I split my hand up and it's got scars. That's when I was climbing the fence. I tried to grab the top button and I realised they had spikes on it. Make me a stitch. Hope I don't, because it'll stick even more and I don't like stitches. Nurse Beatty arrives to clean the grit from John's cuts. Should we start on this arm? That one looks all right, doesn't it? So you often give your cousin rides on the back of your bike, do you? Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> I don't usually want them. <laughs> do you not normally go down the stairs with them on the back? I can't go down the stairs on my bike without anybody on the back anyway. Mm -hmm. Too scared. They're all pretty clean, to be honest. This one's got a bit of sock fluff. <laughs> a brand new socks. <laughs> right, elbow. It's a big one. Why not? Because it is hot. Okay. You need to make sure there's no glass or anything in. Children suffer 2,000 injuries every year on their bikes. I'm getting on now. All right. right. Good. Do you think you'll go down them again? Yes. Do you? Do you think you'll wear a helmet next time? No. You should like wear a helmet. I think you should. You'll end up back on this bed. That's oh, yeah. good. <laughs> it's not good. It is. I like these beds. Oh. If grit is left in the wound, it's likely to get infected and fail to heal. Just pop your arm out straight for me again. Nurse practitioner Rain wants to prepare the area with anaesthetic cream. What we'll do, we'll put that magic cream on to make it go numb and then we can give it a really good clean because you've got little dots of gravel in there. You can see it, can't yeah, you? Yeah, and it needs to come out. Is that OK? Well, I'll not feel a thing, well. No. It'll just feel like, you'll just feel us rubbing. So put a little I'm bit of the gel in out. the wound and then a little bit round and then cover it over and then it'll go nice and white and that's how we know it's numb. Kiss it look. Alright. That's it. In 20 minutes, the wound will be numb. Until then, John will have to wait with paediatric bed 27 to find out if stitches are needed. At Newcastle's RVI, a &E bed 9 is with 19-year-old Ashley. He was rushed into hospital following heavy blood loss. Registrar Dr Lung has struggled to get a blood sample. Should we have a look at the ultrasound before we stick any more holes in you? She's having to use an ultrasound machine to find a suitable vein in Ashley's arm. Can I just have a look at your other arm, see if that's any better? Just in case that one looks any better. OK, the sharp scratch coming. Right, found some blood, which is good. No, you're not a zombie. Ashley recently had his appendix taken out. 
the blood loss he's experiencing could be a sign of infection. A&E Bed 9 takes him for an X-ray. The heavy bleeding could also be caused by a perforated bowel. The X-ray will also cover Ashley's chest and abdomen. Ashley, can you just tell me your first, please? Dr Lung is concerned about Ashley's extreme abdominal pain. He's looking like he's going to have to come into hospital for a couple of days. So I think our priorities at the moment is to get him comfortable in terms of pain relief, um, make sure he's not got any ongoing infection. I think just due to his level of pain um, and his past medical history, a surgical review would be appropriate for him. OK, Ashley, deep breath in there. A consultation with a surgeon will determine whether Ashley needs another operation. Give him a call now for you. Meanwhile, Nurse Burke has arrived at A&E Bed 9 to give Ashley more pain relief. Right, have you had morphine before? Yeah. But Ashley's condition is deteriorating. You all right? <laughs> you OK? No. Ashley? Ashley? A and E bed nine takes Ashley back to the bay to be monitored. You alright? I just had a massive pain and do you know what happened? <sighs> Dr. Long has made the decision to transfer Ashley to the surgical team. Oh hi, it's Becky on the A and E Regis. Um, can I refer you a patient, please? He's taken his own Oromorph Tramadol and he's still in a lot of pain, so he's had some IV morphine from us. Mm -hmm. But I think given his past history and the amount of pain he's in, he's not going to escape, I think, without a surgical review plus minus admission. Ashley leaves A&E Bed 9 for a bed in the observation unit where he'll be okay. seen by a surgeon. This one's much better, yeah. It's more comfier than the one round the corner. A&E Bed 9 is free for the next emergency patient. Yeah, I feel like I'll be all right, yeah. Across at the Great North Children's Hospital... Hello, good day, Hello, good day, Becky speaking. The paediatric um, emergency I'm department is also busy. Has he been coming in regularly for some blood tests, has he? Or... A&E bed 27 and 11-year-old John have been together for just over an hour. He's had an accident and fallen off his bike. The wound, which is filled with gravel, may need stitches. Knock out stitches. Needles go from the arm. I'm going to punch him. Nurses have tried to clean the wound, but the pain was too much for John. Are you ready for us to try again? Yes. Yeah. An aesthetic cream was applied 45 minutes ago. Nurse Beatty will try again. Are you scared? Yes. Why is it white? Because it will have gone a bit numb. Thank you. Don't look. Still feel it? Don't hit the nurse. <laughs> <laughs> His legs are going on. Yeah, over. I don't want an injury as well. <laughs> squeeze my hand. Good lad. I squeeze me. <laughs> don't break your hand. The wound has to be cleaned in case John needs stitches. I really stuck in there. I'm still Because you hurt. Getting the bits out, don't worry. They're coming. Hurry up. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> Oh. Really places, you'll have your on bed. Yeah. I'm not holding his hand anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Looks just all like black and dirty and ugly and uh, disgusting. There's one piece of grit that Nurse Beatty is struggling to remove. But I 
just can't get that last bit of gravel out the back. I'll just leave it. <laughs> you can't just leave it. Are you happy for me to have another little poke? I think we've got it. Good. Is that it out? I think we've got it. Yeah? Yes. Looks like it's gone, doesn't it? Yes. Now whether we can get that together. If John's large cut can't be closed with stereo strips, he will need stitches. I don't know whether we're going to get that together. Will it not just heal? No, it's quite, it's deep. Oh. Right. I need you to keep your arm straight for me. No. Sorry. So what are these stitches? I think what we should do is ask Louise to come back and have another look. I just don't think the stereo strips are going to stick. So I couldn't get the wound together just with the small stereo strips. Um, it just the, they wouldn't stick and the wound wouldn't come together. I don't know if you can come and have a quick look and see what you can do. Yeah, no, I'll have a little look. Hello, puppets. Can I have a look at this as well? Yeah. yeah. Let me just have a little peep. See how clean it is. That's perfect. Let me see what we can do. I don't want stitches. You don't. So if you pop your arm out for me. Nurse practitioner Rain attempts to bind the wound with a longer steri strip. How does that feel? Okay. I'm just gonna put another one on. Can I have a look? Oh yes. Okay. You alright? Yes. You seem super brave today. So these need to stay on for five days and they need to stay clean and dry in that time, OK? John didn't want stitches, but he would like something else. I've got a bandage. I'll have a, a nice dressing on, maybe. You're desperate for a bandage, are you? Let's <laughs> <laughs> have a little look. I think it'd probably be better if we leave that open rather than putting a dressing on. Oh, I want a bandage. A big bandage. You don't need a bandage. <laughs> Come on, then we can go home. John and his mum head home. Paediatric bed nine is cleaned and prepped, ready for its next patient. It's midnight at Queen's Hospital, Romford, and there's an emergency. 30-year-old Yona has been rushed to theatre on maternity bed seven. I'm just going to clean you and check where the baby is. Is that OK? Oh! Yona was scheduled to have a caesarean to deliver her breech baby. But now she's gone into labour naturally. It's progressed too far for surgery or an epidural for pain relief. Just stay here. Make sure that she stays on the table and doesn't fall off. Deep breath in and out. Bit more in the middle. Okay, because you're on the slab here. That's it. We've got to get your husband in, okay? Dr. Noyne is the anaesthetist dealing with this emergency delivery. The plan was to do a cesarean section. Yeah. Okay. The cesarean section doesn't make any point because the baby is too low down. Yeah. So in that case, I can't do a spinal anaesthetic because. With the spinal anaesthetic, she can push his heart to get the baby out. A ten strong team of doctors, midwives, and other theatre staff are working together to try and deliver the baby safely. It's a very high intensity situation. There's a lot of things that can go terribly wrong. Any movement of the mom can be dangerous. Oh, no. 
Three percent of all births are breech. Most aren't delivered naturally. Ayana, okay. push into your bottom. And push. Push, push, push. push. Like you've never pushed before. Go on, go on. She's coming to the track. Yes. The track is yes. on baby. Right? That's it. Well, it 30 minutes after being brought to theatre, Yona gives birth. Good job, you two. Congratulations. It's a healthy baby girl. Over three hours after arriving on maternity bed seven, Yona and Liviu are with their new baby daughter, Chloe. No, it's OK. It's OK if I put you on a monitor. Congrats, you two. You've been great. Thank you very much. I'm good. I'm happy. Now we're absolutely perfect. The baby is good. My wife is OK, you know. We're together, for family. It's perfect. Our hospital beds have given us intimate access to the work of the NHS. After a short stay on paediatric bed 27, John's wounds have healed and he's back doing stunts on his bike. Ashley was treated for a serious infection and spent five days in hospital. It's now cleared up. Since the car accident, Joanne and Brian have tracked down the driver who helped them to say thank you. And after a high-risk delivery, baby Chloe is doing well. The beds are now back on their wards, ready and waiting for their next round of patients. <laughs>